Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Paul Rubens set of 24 full pan student watercolors. I've enjoyed the Paul Rubens products that I've used over the years. The only thing I haven't really liked by them was their tube student watercolor paints. I figured if you're going to spend that much for the student range, spend a couple more dollars and get the artist range. Um, but other than that, I've been really impressed with all of their products. So I've had a few people ask me about these. In fact, it was a viewer that let me know about this set being a Available a couple weeks ago before I'd even heard about it and uh, shortly thereafter the Paul Rubens company asked me if I would like to try these paints out and since I did have a few viewers that expressed interest I said sure because I'm always curious to try new paints. So it comes in a thin chipboard box with some um, with Paul Rubens logo on it, some gold foiling and some kind of spot varnish embossing. It's not as luxury as their um, uh, you know their artist grade metallic watercolors and their artist grade standard watercolor and uh, glitter watercolor watercolors which come in a heavy chipboard box and a polishing cloth around it but it's not bad definitely not bad for the price it's around 25 bucks I think uh, currently on Amazon and you get a Tiffany blue tin with a thumb holder on the back it's got little bumpers for your table so it shouldn't rock when you're using it if your table's uneven it's a pretty big size palette too let's compare it to a standard size 48 set of watercolors. Um, so it's about an inch and a quarter larger on the long side, about an inch wider. And uh, inside you will find ample mixing area, which is nice. I'm going to zoom out just so we can see this a little better. And it comes with an overlay. And as I was looking at this, I thought, boy, you know what? This reminds me of something else. The color names, the color numbers, the layout, it all kind of reminded me of another paint set that you have probably seen me review in the past. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've seen other people review it. But a few years ago, um, I received this set for review. This is the Sonnet Watercolors by Nevskaya Palitra, which is the company that makes the Yarker St. Petersburg paints and also the White Knight paints. It's the, the St. Petersburg and the Yarker St. Petersburg and the White Knights are the same paint. They're just, um, they're called different things for different markets. But they're both by Nevskaya, uh, Nevskaya, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Palitra. I have a hard time with that, with that, uh, with Russian pronunciation. Um, but anyway, so when these came in and I started playing with them, like, you know, what? I gotta get that other paint set out and compare. I really liked this student paint set. The only thing I didn't like is that it's in a cardboard box and there's no mixing area, so I have to go find another palette or plate if I'm gonna use these. And it's just less convenient than grabbing one of my other paint sets if I'm going to go paint something. But I really like the quality of the paint. So, when I got these, um, I swatched them out, and then I thought, you know, I really got to compare those. And so I grabbed the overlay, which is one thing that kind of, like, boy, that seems familiar. Um, and then I compared them, and every name, like, that's Zinc White 100, that's Zinc White 100, uh, Gold Ochre 205, Gold Ochre 205, uh, Matter Rake Red 317, Matter Rake uh, Red 317, and so on and so forth. Every name and number was identical. And then I compared the swatches, and the swatch colors were all identical. So I've got my big binder of, um, of watercolor swatches over here. I'm just going to grab that really quick. And I have this big swatch of the, con um, the, the um, Sonnet watercolors. So I'm just going to zoom out here. Ooh, there we go. And uh, the neat thing with the Sonnet watercolors was that I could dig up light, uh, light fastness and pigment information. Now there is light fastness information on the um, on the overlay here, and I used a Google Translate to scan the brochure and figure out what was the most light fast and what was the least light fast. So um, twos, like one would be very bad, two would be poor, uh, and then like you know four or five would be good light fastness. Um, and this is similar here, but they give, um, their, I think they only do a one, two, three scale. So their scale's a little bit different. But anyway, there is light fastness information. There's pigment information on the website for Sonnet, and I didn't see any for, for Paul Rubens yet out, but it could be coming, and um, I think it's probably the same as the Sonnet, giving all the similarities. So I assume there's a collaboration between those brands. Um, often, if a, if a company's coming out with a student range or a craft company's coming out with products, they will find an established maker and will pay them to private label their paints for them. And I think that's what we have going on here. 
Um, cause these, and I, I find these to be very much nicer than the Paul Rubens tubes. So the colors seem to match up just about identical. PY2 for that yellow, PY1 for this, and I drew a, a square around the colors that weren't light fastness, light, oh my gosh, light fast in the sonnet range. And, uh, just so I, in case I didn't remember a pigment, I would know right offhand looking at the swatch. PY1, not a light fast color. It's kind of a mid yellow. Uh, PY3 is Hansi yellow. That seems to be, that's a nice stable yellow. You see that everywhere. Um, this uh, gold ochre is a it has a base of yellow ochre, PY43, and then a red and another yellow in there. This is PO13, not a stable color. This is PR2, not a stable color. Um, PR170, that's all right. PB29, but these are like, I mean, they were uncannily identical as I matched up the colors. And I was really impressed with them. Both of the violets are a little dodgy, identical violets. Now this has been in my binder for a couple of years. There hasn't been any fading. I put the strong color and then kind of pulled it out with water for each of these swatches. That's why you see half of them being lighter than the other half, just because the way I swatched back then. Um, but that was neat. So I think I think I could trust those are the pigment information. Those are the pigment numbers and pigment pigments used in these paints. And I think for the price of 25 bucks, you know, it's more than fair. Now let's look at the um, the pans themselves. And because I was curious about these compared to the sonnets. And I have to do a little, a little difficult to get these pans out. In fact, I find taking out the little tray, this is kind of like a molded plastic tray that all these sit in. So if you wanted to take these out and rearrange them, like use some magnets and stick them to the pan and put them closer together so you have more room. Actually, Kimberly Crick on YouTube reviewed this set. Um, it was a couple days ago and that's what she did. And I thought, oh, that's a neat idea. I like having them spread out a little bit. So if I'm getting in here with a big brush, I'm not gonna accidentally hit another pan with my brush. I like having that space but you could do that if you want. It's just a metal tin underneath and there's a piece of foam there to uh, probably keep it from rattling around. So I like this layout. I'd, I'd be happy to leave this just as it is. But if you wanna take out a pan and compare them with these sonnets, just because they are so close, you might as well compare them. They're not the same pans. I wanted to take one out and see if it had the um, Navisca Pelitra logo on the bottom, which it doesn't. And it's also the pan size is quite a bit different. So if you look at the pans themselves, um, the Paul Rubens has flat edges and it is about a quarter of an inch longer. And it is, um, that's about the same width, maybe just a smidgen wider. Uh, they both appear to be liquid filled and um, I like them both and they both seem to be very similar. So I think it might be a situation where they um, they just sent their pans, had them filled by, uh, by the uh, Sonnet Company, Navisca Palitra. I'm gonna, one of these days, I'm gonna like get that pronunciation down. Um, because often, you know, you'll see collaborations with brands, especially if they're coming out with something new and novel and, you know, student grade or uh, what have you. But I'm not mad at it. I like it. I think it, I, it solves a problem that I had with the condom paints, there being not a palette. In fact, I was very, uh, very much considering purchasing one of those cute yellow palettes that have 21 of these colors from the uh, condom range because I like the paint quite a bit. Or buying a palette and putting these in it. That I've actually, that's what I was more, more uh, seriously considering. But I just hadn't gotten around to it. Um, but that was my one, my one gripe with this paint is that ah, it doesn't come with a palette, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just more likely to grab a paint set that's got a palette. So let's take a look at what else comes with it. You've got the overlay, which I think is really handy because. Um, transparent watercolors, especially if they're really transparent, don't show up as what they are when you're looking at the dried down paints. They look a lot darker. So it comes with a color chart you can fill in with the color names in English and Chinese and the color numbers, which is nice because you have the overlay and you can double check. Um, it also comes with a brochure of their artist grade paints in case you're curious what colors you could find available from them. I mean, generally you want companies that offer artist grade paints, they want their student grade lines to be an introduction and entice you to try their artist grade paints. So it gets kind of gets you in as a new painter and then hopefully builds a brand loyalty. Um, and I think this would do that. This is These are nice paints. Now these are also, um, and I'm just gonna show you what I swatched. I swatched this on my normal swatching paper. Um, another student set that they have that I really like is the, the Pretty Excellent paints. That's also made by the Paul Rubens Company. And um, they come in that kind of like uh, molded plastic tray. They've got 36 colors, a half pans. They are an exceptional value. I can just show you the color combinations. Um, and it, I think it really would boil down to which set you went with. Um, 
because I mean, I find the quality of both of these paints to be very, very similar. It would just come down to, would you rather have more of a variety of colors or in smaller pans, or would you rather have larger pans for use with bigger brushes that you can do more mixing with? That's really what it boils down to if you're trying to determine between these two sets. I found the quality to be very similar, the transparency to be very similar. Um, you know, the Pretty Excellent's gonna have more convenience colors, uh, but you can mix pretty much whatever you like from the Paul Rubin student set. Now for mixing, I found they mixed really well. I mean, I do like that pretty excellent set. It's it's tough to choose. They're both really good, uh, especially for that $25 price point. Um, it's really tough to beat. This one comes with pretty excellent, has a water brush, and the Paul Rubens doesn't. And the, you know, pretty excellent, like smaller footprint. So, you know, you know what you want. You know, go for what makes sense for you. So I did some mixing with the, uh, the Paul Rubens student grade full pan set. And I used the warm, now that red is pro it might be problematic, but I used that red and I used the warm yellow and the warm blue, the ultramarine blue, and I would say that's kind of like a gamboge or Indian yellow, mixed gorgeous secondary tones, earthy secondary tones for green and purple, a nice vivid orange. Tertiary colors are also lovely. Um, and then I did a triad of the cool primaries and it mixed even a decent orange. So if you didn't want to use that red because you're worried about light fastness, you could still use the cooler red and get a decent orange, which I thought was nice. Especially if you took the cooler red with the warmer yellow, I think you'd get a gorgeous orange. And they, the three primaries together made a gray. Those three primaries made a nice clean brown. Um, I didn't get any chalkiness with any of these, even with the glazing, because I do my swatch and then I do a glaze over. Uh, the only haze I saw in any of these colors, a little bit on that green, but I think it's more of like, because uh, I see that gloss to the color, I might have just put too much down. Um, or it's also a really dark color when you have it in mass tone, so that could be what's obscuring that. A little bit in the in the yellow and green. That green is made with um, with that yellow and that green, so that yellow has a little bit of a haze, so that makes sense. And um, not much on the white. The white is very weak. The white is definitely more for like um, subduing your colors. It, it's it's a mixing white. It's uh, well, zinc white is a is a mixing white not opaque at all. So you would definitely still need to have a gouache if you like to use opaque white for accents. That isn't going to cut it. Um, but it's nice for mixing. It actually mixes really well as far as making a sheer pastel. And um, well, White Knights is kind of known for their, they have some, the company that makes the, the, the Sonnet paints, they're known for their pastels, having a clean pastel range as well that's recently been, been produced. Now I'm not saying for sure these were made by them, but it does seem to be uncanny, the resemblance, and um, and I like both paints, so I'm not I'm not unhappy with that. I think it's good if you're if you are gonna outsource, not saying they are, but it seems that way. Um, you wanna go with a you wanna go with a brand that is going to live up to your standards. Um, and also I noticed that with these with these the Sonic colors, there are some, they, the way the numbers lay out, they seem to be in line with the White Knights and Yarka numbers, and some of them are the same. So that would just make it make me believe that they are more likely to be making this paint for them, themselves than for other companies as well. I don't know though for sure, but that's my, uh, that's my, my hunch anyway. I, and I, really, I like the Pretty Excellence too. I think any of these, these student grade sets would be an excellent gift, somebody for a budding artist or for a travel set because you don't want to lose your expensive paints. You know, I'm always nervous about that if I'm traveling. I, I don't want to have my most precious paints. So just some artwork that I've done with these. I did um, this little deer. I wanted, I wet the whole deer and then it was dripping in colors. So the paint does not flow like crazy. It's definitely more like, a, behaves more like a mission gold. Um, not not like a core or a Prima marketing paint where you touch your, your brush down and the paint just whooshes off the end. It definitely stays a little bit more where you put it, but no issues with blending at all. Um, it behaved like I would expect a decent watercolor to behave. Very transparent, which is a good thing with student watercolors, which tend to be chalky. These are not chalky at all. Uh, I, you know, got some got some a decent amount of flow here with my little rose experiment. I think I had a little issue with this paper. This this sheet of paper, it's a pamphlet style sketchbook. This particular sheet of paper seems to have some resist issues, some sizing issues. I don't know what it is, but um, I kind of like where I was going with that. I might develop that idea a little further. I also just kind of fooled around in this sketchbook, did a little sky. This paper is super absorbent. 
Um, and not very well sized. You can see I've got some major tearing of the paper where I had the tape. But um, just kind of playing around with it. Oh, and I played around with it in my Arteza sketchbook as well. I've been like, I've had such a creative block the last couple of days. Uh, but let me get to that. I just kind of did a little cardinal, just so quick. My cat stepped on it. So it was a little paw pad <laughs> mark on it. Um, and just another little flower just to play and layer and just see how it was doing. Um, and yeah, I think the paint's going to behave fine. I think it's going to be a good option for a budget paint. And it's got my thumbs up. So check it out if you're looking for, if you or if you liked these paints. Maybe you used them up and you're like, oh, I like those paints. I'd like to get a set that had a palette. Well, here you go. Um, definitely, definitely comparable to those, if not the identical paints. And uh, I like them. I definitely give them a thumbs up. I will link all these things down below so you can find them. These have recently been released on Amazon. I like the size of the tin. Um, because it's kind of large, I don't know, it, it feels uh, kind of lightweight, but I think that might just be because it's so large. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it, how long it would hold. I'm looking at the hinge. It has a straight hinge all the way across instead of like having like the the lid attached in several plate you know instead of having like kind of that broken piano hinge it's got like a uh, just a one piece of metal folded over so that might be make it a little weaker I don't know um I haven't had a lot experience with a tin quite like this before so I can't say if it's going to be less durable than another one it does feel like it, it wants to indent a little bit more see that I don't know if that's a big deal if it's going to make an make a difference maybe if you're giving this to a kid I don't know, are they going to crush it? I don't know, I, I can't imagine, but anything's possible when kids are concerned, I suppose. But as far as quality, I don't think you can go wrong. These are lovely paints, as is most of the things in the Paul Rubens range. And I feel like it's priced cheap enough that there's enough of a difference between like the price of this and the price of their artist grade. So, um... Their artist grade 24 set, I think, is around $50. Their artist grade 48 set which would be 48 half pans and these are 24 full pans so it would be the same amount of paint is more like 80 bucks so this is definitely a good cost savings to get a decent paint at a low price and um and i would definitely choose this over their tube student paint their tube student paint isn't that much cheaper than their artist quality and it's it's not as good as this, the pans here in my opinion or the pretty excellent pans so i don't think you can go wrong with either of these uh, and the, the tins are cute. I like I like the color tins. I know it's silly, but uh, but it's fun and and I and I like it when a company does something different with their packaging. I find it exciting and uh, and fun, especially if you're getting a gift for somebody because it just is a little a spark some joy. Spark some joy. What can I say? Well, hope you enjoyed this this uh, review. I know it uh, it's. I don't know. What do I know? I don't know what I know. I know that I've been in a creative slump. That's what I know. So. <laughs> So I apologize if, uh, if my artwork isn't that uh, inspiring, but um, I just wanted to try out the paint, see how they did. They did great. I think you'll enjoy them. If you're in the market for some paint, please give me a thumbs up if you like reviews. And if you know anybody looking for a beginner set of paints, yeah, you can suggest these to them. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.